Senior pastors have talked on it, preached on it many times, but just a lot of reminder from our own side. Um, our theme for this month is um, a month of God's enduring mercy. And the spirit of the month is Psalm 89. Psalm 89, verse 28, which I read. My mercy I will keep for him forever. And my covenant shall stand firm with him. Psalm 89, verse 28. It says, My mercy I will keep for him forever. My covenant shall stand firm with him. Here, God is referring to David, He's talking to David. But we are far better because we are in a better covenant with God. And that word is meant for us as well. So while I started in my usual way, I tried to look at the literal meaning of mercy in the dictionary. And I quote, mercy is compassionate or kindly forbearance shown towards an offender, an enemy, or other person in one's power of compassion, pity or benevolence. Meaning that Someone that has offended you, you show, or an enemy, you show within your own power to forget what he or she has done. You pardon that person. You know, I, I, I got to know that many of times we talk, we talk about this mercy, you just take it for granted, oh, God have mercy. You will see this happen, oh, God have mercy. But if we really know what it means, that's what it means. So with the theme for this one that says you have mercy, it means that what God is saying that he's going to have compassion, he's going to have benevolence, kind of balance towards us. Which means once we keep his commandment and his precepts, those promises will be fulfilled in our lives in Jesus' name. So enduring means lasting and permanent. God's permanent and lasting mercy upon us all. That's our prayer. You know, as I said, we are in a better covenant than David. So definitely is our portion in Jesus' name. You know, mercy fuels compassion, providing promise, promising glint of light in a darkened area. It is kind, forward forgiveness. You know, if you, if you are someone that has mercy in him or in you, right? Whatever anybody does for you, even before they do it, you're already giving them mercy. That it means forward forgiveness. Mercy chooses not to be offended. Compassion is seeing a hurting heart behind a hurtful word. You know, whatever they say to you, that is hurting, you look at it, oh, that person, God forgive him or her, it seems he doesn't know what it means, what he just said to me. He's not very sure what it means. You know, it says God himself, God's mercy reflects, is reflected on the cross of Christ. A direct reflection of his love for us. Mercy is an extension and expression of love. An act of kindness Compassion or favor. Mercy is the character of our, our God or our one true God. You know, because what did he do? Let's look at um, Lamentations 3, verse 22. Lamentations 3, verse 22. 
and I read from English Standard Version. The steadfastness love of our the steadfast love of our Lord never ceases. His message never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Grace is your faithfulness. You know, we sing that song every now and then. Now the question is this. What is God's mercy? What is God's mercy? You know, God's plan from beginning is some merciful love for us. Knowing that there's nothing we could do to earn our way to his presence. So he made the way through the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. He defeated the death. So Jesus opened up and access to us to God. Through prayers, through God's words and Holy Spirit, living in us each day, brings fresh mercy unto us. Every morning, our God is faithful. Though every day we fall short of his mercy, yet he's very merciful. Mercy is God's gift to repentant hearts. It's God's gift to repentant heart. God has chosen to be merciful to his people. Mercy is an expression of who our God is. Because God himself is love. Now, now we know what mercy is. We know what God's mercy is. Let's look at the benefits of God's mercy. When mercy speaks for us, I'll, I'll just speak on two of them. The first one is favor. You know, Proverbs 6, verse 7 says, Proverbs 6, verse 7, When a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemy to be at peace with him. You know, in the midst of this chaos, whatever the chaos may be, God's message speaks for his people. And my prayer is that for all of us, his mercy will speak for us. Wherever we are, we will stand out. That's God's mercy for you. God has chosen to favor individuals in the midst of many when his mercy speaks. Whatever it may look like, you think, oh, it's, I can't get this, I can't get that. In the midst of people there, mercy will speak for you in Jesus' name. Now, number two, because of mercy, impossibility becomes possible. What is it that you look at that, oh, this thing is becoming too hard, it's not possible, can I make it, or can I not make it? God mercy. When he speaks, he speaks. That's what it means. When God but mercy speaks, he speaks. Romans 9, verse 15. Romans 9, 15. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. I will have compassion on whoever I have compassion. So then, God's choice is not dependent on human will, nor on human effort. That is, the totality of our striving is not based on it, but on who God chooses to show mercy. You know, when we look at when we look at the story of Moses, it shows that God's mercy was on him. What seems impossible in his life, Pharaoh, who has studied his life, was the one that made provision for his upbringing. God's mercy can make a great difference in one's life, even with the present wobbling world economy, we see that many God's children are prospering and we all continue to prosper in Jesus' name, despite the situation that we are in. Romans 9, 15, 16 that I read earlier shows that it has its prerogative. It is the exclusive right and privilege to show mercy to whoever to show mercy to, not by what you do, not how much Bible, you know, not how many times you come to church, it's at his mercy. Now let's look at examples of God's mercy and the Bible. I have two examples. 
The first one is to the Israelites in the desert. Exodus 16, verse 3, I read. Exodus 16, verse 3. The Israelites said to them, that is to Moses and Aaron, if only you had died, we have died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. That was that we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food that we wanted. But you have brought us onto this desert to starve the entire assembly to death. That was when they were on their journey, when they left Egypt. You know, they got there, nothing to eat, and they were saying, oh, you will have left us in that place. At least, though we were slaves, but we were still eating. And what happened? They were grumbling, they were doing all that. Despite that, God certainly chose to be merciful to them. You know, it can be very annoying. Those who you think you are trying to save are now blaming you. He loved them despite their rebellion action and ungrateful attitude. God's covenant with them was out of his mercy. He chose to bless them with what they did not deserve. So in Exodus 16, verse 12, Exodus 16, 12, he said, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at white light, you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God. God answered their complaints, their grumbling with water, food, protection, and provision. That's what he did. You know, those you can just look at them, you just nonsense people. That's why all I did for you, you are grumbling, you are doing that. Instead of that, he showed mercy to them. He showed mercy. And I pray that God will continue to show mercy. The second one is King David. David, as you all know, is a man after God's heart. David fought battles, he slayed the earth, he was chosen as king. But he did one thing. He committed adultery with another person's wife, Bathsheba. He even had his husband killed just to cover his sin. You know, David messed up seriously. You know, like, like the Americans will tell you, oh, you dropped the ball. David dropped the ball. He messed up. Even the most audacious follower of God can fall into sin. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit will help us in this situation. But what did Moses do? Sorry, David. What did he do? He cried out to God for mercy. So in Psalm 51, verse 1, Psalm 51, verse 1, he cried out, Have mercy on me, O God. According to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, brought out my transgression. At the same time that he was crying for mercy, he also asked for a new heart. That was in 51 again, verse 10. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a swathed spirit within me. God, be faithful, heart. Is Christ. He had his Christ. So in 2 Samuel 12, he, 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 he told Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. But Nathan replied, The Lord has taken away your sin and you are not going to die. That's the repercussion of what he did with Bathsheba. You know, David realized his mistake, pleaded for mercy. And children of heart, and God had his heart mercy on him. Actually, when David said God should blot his transgression, God cannot forget. He wants God to forget. God, God is not forgetful, but what he's trying to say is that David wants, does not want God to relate with him in view of rebellious action. You know. If anybody does, someone has done something bad to you, at times you may forgive that person, you look at it. But when that person comes next, what he did before, 
we explain God. That's what David was trying to say. God, don't relate with me in the way I behaved. And God, in his infinite mercy, had him and, and had mercy on him. Though, why he did was tormenting his mind. For him to be asking God to have change, that if you give me a new heart, it means that David's heart sensitivity towards God, it shows his heart sensitivity towards God. Because if he doesn't have any sensitive activity towards God or not, it doesn't bother. Nobody, he won't bother that, oh God, change my heart, give me a pure heart, whatever. Only that he knows that he, he, he has that love for God. Then the question is this, as Christians, what is our attitude to mercy? As Christians, what is our attitude to mercy? As Christians, we are expected and commanded to show mercy, compassion, and love to those who are around us. Just as our Father showed compassion on us and mercy. Proverbs 3, Verse 27, Proverbs 3, 27 says, Whenever you possibly can, do good to those who need it. Whenever you can possibly can, do good to those who need it. Then Matthew 7, verse 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, but they shall receive mercy. So, give and it shall be given unto you. These two, two scriptures confirm that we are instructed to show mercy. I pray that God will give us the urge to be able to do such in Jesus' name. Before I come to the end of, the, of, of, of this discussion, there's always a question of Mercy and grace related. Yes, I think they are. Love is the common denominator between grace and mercy. Love is the common denominator. Mercy is what you get out of trouble. That mercy is what gets us out of trouble. Why grace gives us what we do not deserve. Is love for us made him have mercy on us? And that same love made him give us what we do not deserve. We can now say that the two has love in common. Mercy is what gets us out of trouble. While grace gives us those things that we do not deserve. Because his love for us made him have mercy on us. And that same love made him to give us those things we do not deserve. So my prayer is, in whatever we do, we know what mercy is. Mercy will speak for us. In every situation that we are, mercy will speak for us. Whatever we are going through, whatever the mountain that is before us, my prayer is that his mercy will speak for us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your mercy. Father, thank you for the way we see us and you have still chose us that way. You embrace us completely. That's why all. Father, I pray that you always forgive. You never love us less. That's why all this. We come to you with our contract us, praying for the redemptive statue you deserve from us, from our hearts. And forgiveness for the sins we have committed and we commit daily. The mistake we make endless and forthcoming, making your mercy so important to our joy and our hope. Daily, your mercy will speak for us. Daily, your mercy you renew every day. Daily, we can forgive and know that you still love us. You still call us for your purpose. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. We adore you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God.
in Jesus' name. As we have prayed, if you come across this message, you listen to it, and one way or the other, you do not know Christ, I pray that you commit your way to Christ and you find a Bible-believing church, you go there, and they will take you from there. Just commit your ways to God and accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior.